folks, and welcome to this episode of Michael's 3D World. Well, as promised, we're going to do some more upgrades to the Ender 3 Pro. You guys might ask me, why do you keep doing upgrades to this thing? Well, as I told you in the last video, I like to tinker. I like to make things different, better. Uh, I think the upgrades I've done so far were some really valuable, necessary ones. Uh, this would probably be the only one I'd say that I could take or leave at this moment in time because I'm not really a fan of this fan setup. Pun intended. Uh, but all the other upgrades I've done to it, I really like uh, how they turned out. I love how... Let me just get down here and take a little closer look. Now, as I said in a previous video, yes, we did a fan upgrade. We've got a nice Noctua fan. Runs really quiet. You don't even know it's on. But it cools like a son of a gun. And we did the little cover. They make a cover. Uh, uh, on Thingiverse, you can find a cover that just covers the circuit board. But I did something better. I found one that did. Covers the circuit board. Plus, puts my Raspberry Pi right in here. Look at all this wiring. Look how neat and clean all that is. Goes right up through here. Runs my little Y, I don't know what it's called, a YT light, whatever that's called. Anyway, everything you see here, I will include. Uh, I'll, I'll also link to the video where I did all these upgrades, but I'll also include all this stuff all over again in the bottom of the description on this particular video. Everything that I'll be doing in, the, in this video to this machine will be at the top of the description. So let's talk about some of the upgrades we're gonna do here. And right now, this does not have a silent board. The motherboard is not a silent board. I do have a 4.2.7 board I'm going to put in here that is a silent board. Now, before anybody, you keyboard warriors, get out there and go, why are you putting that board on the recipes? I have it. I had two of them. So why wouldn't I go ahead and use what I have? Instead of going and, yes, I know there's other things you can do and other ones you can buy that are different, better, worse. I don't know. Anyway, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to put a new fan shroud on here that holds two Noctua 40 by 20 premium fans. I've got two of them here. I'm gonna show you how to wire these into this. And then I'm gonna show you how to how, what a butt converter is and what it does, it's in this package here. We'll be installing two butt converters, two butt converter housings, and we're gonna hide it all underneath here. And we're gonna do an all metal uh, for micro, hot end for micro Swiss. That's gonna go on this machine. New Capricorn Bowden tube gonna go in here. Why? Because it's better tube than what's here. Not that I'm worried about with this with this new all metal hot end. I won't have to worry about a, a cheap piece of Bowden tube melting down there because it'll never be down that far. But Capricorn is nice. It holds good. Holds onto the in the Bowden tube whatever you call it, fittings better. But anyway, so. And some of you might already ask. I'm going to answer this question up front, and I'll remind you at the end of the video. Yes, I'm putting two butt converters. Why am I using two butt converters? People have asked me, can't you hook these fans up in series? Well, you could, I suppose. But I'm not. Because this fan runs all the time. This fan cycles on and off according to after your first couple layers, it kicks on. So it needs to be coming from two different controls. So it's just as easy to put. These are, these are inexpensive. And easy to hook up and easy to do what you need to do with them. I got butt converters on all of my printers so far. Uh, actually, every single one, when it's all said and done, will have one to two to three butt converters on it. Right now, there's a butt converter on this one already. This one will have three when I'm all done because I have one in here that is running my Raspberry Pi where I took the 24 volt tap off the power supply here and Turn it down to 5.1 volts, 5 volts, basically, uh, to run my Raspberry Pi. So when I flip the switch on, everything comes on. Then it connects wirelessly to my computer through the Pi. And that's a Raspberry Pi 3 Plus. Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Anyway, we're going to rip into this thing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this thing over on its back. I'm going to replace the motherboard and tap into the wires that I need to tap into to put my, work, to put my converters my butt converters on and dial them down to 24 volts so I can run my fan. So with that being said, that's what I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to attack it. And I'm going to walk you through step by step as carefully as I can, try to get you as close up in here as I can and show you some of the detail and why I do things so you can have confidence if you want to jump into this. Now, some of the other tools I'm, I have here to start this project, I have an iFixit kit. Link below in the description for that is right here, or will be below in the description. This is a handy toolkit for all your drivers. I have a bolt kit. 
that's on Amazon, a link for that. I have this little Craftsman socket set. Only thing I use off of it so far is a six millimeter for putting the nozzle in and out. I have a heat gun. I have some heat shrink tubing. I have some wire. I have a soldering gun. We're gonna do this thing up right, folks. So follow me, follow along. Uh, everything that I use here, heat gun, soldering gun, solder, uh, voltmeter, all this stuff will be in links below. If you wanna set yourself up to work on these things and have fun with them, all the links and all the descriptions below will be uh, to the Amazon or to the website that has this particular stuff. Not all of it's Amazon stuff. I uh, appreciate you folks using the Amazon uh, links because I get a little bit of a commission from those links. It doesn't cost you a single dime. Not a single dime. But uh, we're doing a little quick walk around here. You can see everything I've got set up ready to go and ready to work on this stuff. And I've got... As you can see over here, I've got several printers that I've done. Ooh, what's that? What's that over there? You haven't seen that video yet. That one's coming too. That's an Ender 5. That's a pretty cool one. So keep following on, subscribe, so you'll be notified when these, when these uh, come along. As you can see, this one here has some red printed parts on it. What's that all about? Well, those are probably upgrades. Wouldn't you know it? More to come on that. Back over here, folks. All right, let's jump in and see what we can do to get to this motherboard and get it replaced. It's pretty straightforward stuff. The only thing that's a little more complex, complex about it uh, is you've got to flash the firmware on here with the right uh, stuff. And I'll show you exactly how to do that too. So everything will work when you're done putting the silent board on. I don't have to tell anybody that if you have one of these, uh, I'm not gonna have a before and after on, on the noise that these things make. Because if you have one, you already know it. And I'm gonna show you how to shut that thing up so your wife won't give you any crap or your husband won't give you any crap about your 3D printer making noise while I'm trying to watch my favorite program or I'm trying to sleep or why has that thing gotta be in the room next to us? Can't that thing be outside somewhere? Now you know what I'm talking about. Let's get in and do it. All right, one of the things I'm gonna do first and foremost is I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the hot end so I can pull the filament out so I can remove the spool and get busy working on this printer. So let's do that now, then we're going to flip it on its back to access the motherboard. Now that I've replaced all the plug-in wires one by one, and like I said before, maybe I said before, there's a drop of hot glue on each one of these you're going to have to peel off before you unplug and plug those in. You don't need to reapply hot glue after that is all said and done. As you can see, I've still got my cooling fan tied onto here yet. I haven't done anything with that. So one by one now, I'm going to replace these wires. So I'm going to work from this end down, and that way you don't get anything confused. Now, I did take a picture of this before I started which is what you should do. So you, in case you lose track or have to undo some wires that you weren't expecting to undo, you can put things right where they need to go. Alrighty, we've got all the wires reconnected exactly like they were on the other board before I do the next step. Don't be afraid to take your old board, put it back in the box, label it Ender Pro Original Board, Ender 3 Pro Original Board, because this is a good backup board in case something was to go out on this one. You can stick this one right back in, and you haven't lost a beat. All the changes we here, we're doing here, uh, when we add the uh, 24 or the 12 volt uh, Noctua fans to it, aren't going to impact the motherboard and how it hooks up. So hang on to your old board; it's worth some dollars in case you need it. Now what we're going to do is get into using these buck converters. And I'm not sure if everybody knows what one of these are, so I'm going to tell you what they are. This is a little device that will take voltage from one voltage going in, plus in, uh, or positive in, negative in, goes in this way, hook wires on this end, and you turn this little screw, and you can actually down the voltage from here down to here. Now all this typically is a 24 volt system here. We're gonna take and run 24 volts into here and run 12 volts out of here. 
We're going to do this in two areas. Now, the biggest thing is, I'm going to see if I can get you in here close enough so you can see what I'm doing. On your wiring, there's this blue and yellow wire here. The blue and yellow wire, if you go up and look at your fan, I disassembled this part here just to, to show you. On this fan here, this is the fan that kicks on after it's done your first, second, or third layer. It kicks on this fan, which cools your tip. This here runs the fan, the red and black run across your thermal brake, which keeps this area cool to keep the heat from coming up and getting into your, further than it's supposed to, prevent heat creep. So, and you ask, why can't I just run these together? Well, because this blue and yellow gets a signal from the board that says, hey, your first, second, or third layer is done. Let's kick that fan on now so we can have an excellent print. Whereas this black and yellow is hooked into just straight up power. And so when that's turned, when the, when the switch is turned on, that fan runs all the time. So that's what we're going to tap into. This fan is on also intermittently to cool the motherboard when it says hey i'm getting a little warm cool me down that's that one goes on the cover so don't get this black and red confused with anything else so we're going to take this black and red back loose off of here and we're going to connect that to uh my butt converter which is going to run up to my top end and keep when i do my work up on top here it'll keep that uh voltage where i want it and then I'll run two new wires into here, into my butt converter. So then that circuit's now complete. And I'll do the same thing here is I'll unplug this. I'll actually cut this wire, hook me on a couple more wires, and splice into both sides and put a butt converter in between, in the middle of everything. I think there's probably enough room I can put the butt converter in here. But I'm thinking there's plenty of room underneath here that I can just put my butt converter, like one here and one here, and keep it contained underneath the machine and out of the way. Plus I can see the lights coming on and off because I'll have visibility through here. Now a lot of you make a tool tray that go in here and whatnot, then you wouldn't be able to see it. That's your choice. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to hook up one of these butt converters. I'm gonna show you how to dial it in. And then once we get this all buttoned up down here, we're gonna flip this up and go to the top side and put our Micro Swiss all metal hot end. And then I'm gonna hook up my pet fang with my two Noctua 40 by 20 fans, premium fans. So without further ado, let's jump into that next. I'm gonna hook up these wires and uh, I'm gonna time lapse it so you can uh, watch the work really quick and then I'll follow, I'll, I'll slow it back down and show you how it looks when it's finished. If you're gonna do some of this work, I've bought one of these, what is this? Plus, 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 plus CVO? Always the better quality. Anyway, it's all the colored wires. My yellow fell inside. It's all the colored wires that you need for doing stuff like this. This is 24 gauge wire. It's the perfect size for doing this type of work. Um, as you can see, the rolls are in here. And all the links for this will be in the description below where you can order exactly the same stuff. And you can do things just exactly the way I did it. All right. So without further ado, let's jump into that. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can have you follow what I did so far. What I did is I took the, I put two new wires coming off of here where the fan for the hot end normally goes into. And I pulled those out, put me two new wires in, came out and around and into my butt converter. This is my positive end. This is my positive and negative out. So in, out. I'm going to adjust the voltage coming out because this goes to my wiring harness that goes all the way to my hot end. So I didn't have to redo anything there, right? I also did the same thing here. And I'm showing you before I put the butt converter in, what I did is I took this little plug here. This is one of your fan plugs. It'll say it right on there. It says, uh, 
K minus fan or KFN. Anyway, it shows the positive and negative right on there. It shows the positive being yellow, negative being uh, blue. And so what I did is I just extended the wire. So now I have two wires that come out this long. And I reconnected them. Now everything's connected up as it was, where it was, just how it was before I spliced into it. I mean, I've got the same voltage, same everything going on there. So that's what's cool about this. Uh, what I'm going to do now, but before I can turn this on, what I got to do is turn this down. But I'm going to, I got to do the flash, the firmware here on the motherboard first, because this motherboard doesn't know what machine it's hooked to. So I'm going to flash, I'm going to put some files on here for the Ender 3 Pro. And then we'll turn it on. Then it'll flash the firmware onto this motherboard. And then we'll be off to the races. And once I do that, I'll go in here and I'll finish putting another butt converter in here. And I'll dial this butt converter down. And I'll dial this butt converter down to the 12 volts for my Noctua fans that I'm going to end up having up top. Are you with me so far? I hope so. I hope this is making sense. Okay, guys, I'm back here with you. Look down here in the bottom corner of your screen. This is me again. Hi. Uh, I'm going to show you how to what you need to do to that little SD card. You can do this to the SD card that came with your machine. You don't need a special SD card. And what you want to do is go to this website right here, reality.com forward slash download. Once you're there, you go and look for uh, what printer you have. You know, if you have an Ender 3, Ender 3 V2, Ender 3 Max, Ender 5, and so on. So what you want to do here is this is an Ender 3. We're going to double click this. So we got an Ender 3 Pro 3D printer. We'll double click that. Oops. Don't double click it. Single click it. Now you're going to look down through here to find out what main board uh, thing you want to use. Now here I have an Ender 3 Pro 4.2.7 mainboard firmware. Double click, single click it, it'll download into a zip file as you can see it's done here. Once it's downloaded, you can double click the zip folder. Here's what you're going to see real quick. We can close that out. Is the Ender 3 Pro 4.2.7 firmware. And what we're going to look for here is the the proper things like say for instance if you got a BL touch with yours then you'll want to use uh without transfer board boom you can use that one uh go into that folder uh I don't have BL touch on this one I got the Marlin original version I don't have filament detector on mine I don't have ZX that's raised to 350 millimeter firmware uh so if you bought an extender kit that actually takes yours up a little taller so I've got the original version so we're gonna open that up Here's what you have. There's two bin files in here. There's a Chinese bin and an English bin file inside there. You're going to take this English bin file and you're going to copy it straight to that SD card. Now you're just going to get your little micro SD card adapter that came with your machine or any of them, any one that you have and plug it into your computer. Once it's plugged in, it's going to open up a file. Uh, here's, your, here's everything that's on that little card right now. So what I'm going to do is take this particular file right here, this Ender 3 Pro English. I'm going to take that file right there. Well, quit. I'll take this file right here. And I'm just going to drag it over and put it on that. And it's the .bin file. That's the one you need to have. Uh, that's the Ender 3 Pro Marlin 2.0. Everything you need to know is right there. Uh, once you've got that on there, just safely eject your card and then plug it back into your machine with your machine turned off then you can close out of all this you don't need anything else here you're done now go plug that card into your machine turn your machine on you'll flash your firmware and everything's good to go we'll finish doing the rest of the install on this piece of equipment all these upgrades that we're doing that's that simple okay i've actually moved the file that i need to boot with on this little SD card. I'll show you that here in a bit. I'll put that in here. Yeah, the other machine's laying on its back. And I'm going to plug the power back in now. Power's back in. Yeah, it's laying down. It ain't going to hurt anything. Nothing's going to go wrong here, I hope. But we're going to go ahead and power it on. Yeah. 
and see what happens. See, now it says Ender 3. It doesn't say Ender 3 Pro because the Ender 3 Pro had no other files on it. Nothing fancy, fancier than the Ender 3. It's the hardware that's surrounding this thing that makes it a little bit different. So now that it's booted up, we're going to go ahead and power it back off. And we're going to remove the card because we don't need it. Now when I turn it back on, it should boot up with Ender 3 again. See how it comes up a little quicker that go around? I know it's upside down here, but that should be ready to rock and roll. I'm going to go ahead and power it off now and finish doing the install of my butt converters. Okay, now that I've got the butt converters here attached, I've got the power on. I've got the outside here on the bottom of both of these. So now I'm need to, and I've got them both turned on, as you can see. I'm going to hook the touch the positive to the positive, negative to the negative. Let's see if we can see what's going on here on my little screen. We should see about 20, maybe 21 volts coming out of it on the other end here. I can get it there. I can get it touching everything properly. Come on. They're sitting on 22 volts. So let's go ahead and back these down. This little pot right here. Turning it counterclockwise. I'm going to take it down to 12. So we got that one turned down to 12. We'll come down here and turn this one down to 12 as well. There, both buck converters are turned down to 12. With that done, I can go ahead and snap my little covers back on. Or snap them on to start with. You guys might be asking how I hook these on here. <laughs> You're going to cringe when I tell you. I took some 220 grit sandpaper and I sanded this middle rail here. And I wiped it down with alcohol. And then I uh, hot glued it on. So they can pop back off if one of them pop off, but I'm not gonna pop them back off. Well, the vibration this little fan has. I think there's a redesign in order for that bad boy. Look you know at that thing vibrate. All right, that button's up the bottom end. That turned out really clean and nice. I don't know how you guys think, what you guys think about it, but I thought it turned out pretty good. Now we're gonna do something that'll also make you cringe here. You watch this. Here again, I've only had this machine for maybe two weeks now. But we got to make it right. Now I want to preserve as much of this wire as I can. So as you can see, the side fan, which is your tip cooling fan, is blue and yellow. The other fan is black and red. We're going to go ahead and pull this fan out of here. Because I want to save as much of the original wire as I can. I don't care about the little 24 volt fan. All right, now it's time to do this top end. Let me run you through what I did. All you had to do is unbolt the two screws that hold this little cage on. Snip as much of the these little wires off as you can to save as much of that original wiring as you can. Then you're going to take and undo this little screw on the side that holds the thermistor. And then the element goes in here, you should be able to back off that set screw and pull it out. You may be able to do all this cold. If you can't, don't force it. Heat it up to 200, 210 degrees, and you will be able to back this screw off and back that screw off and also slide this out, be able to push it from this end and get it out. Be very careful not to damage or bend this excessively. Uh, that's what I had to do on my other Ender 3 uh, to, do the, to get this apart. But this one was new enough, it just all came apart and I haven't had any major blow-ups yet. Now, so now we've got a bare, a bare blank canvas, if you will. 
So here's all the pieces down here on the table that are in your Micro Swiss Hot In. Now I want to show you the secret to how this works and why this works. Some people may or may not know this. And I want to share that little secret with you. Well, the whole idea is when you have blowouts and stuff, it's usually between the hot end and where your normally your boating tube comes down against this tight. And you got a good square cut on it so it fits tight. And with that nice and tight, uh Melted filament can't ooze out and cause blockages and stuff and get crystallized and make a real mess out of things. Well, that's because you have Bowden tubes, so you got to be make sure that's tight. Well, it's metal to plastic. Eventually, it's going to give, right? The beauty about this is these two pieces are designed to come together and tighten up face-to-face. -face. Guess what? Nothing can get out of that when it's tightened face-to-face. -face. So when you're putting this back together, what you're going to want to do is tighten this piece down and they provide you with a little wrench. Let's pull that out right here. There's a little wrench, little set screws, little keepers. They give you even a spare little doohickey like this that goes in the top if this one was to go bad. Now what we can do, we can go ahead and we'll get this piece out of our way. We can go ahead and hang it up here where it belongs and use the provided flathead screws. And you guys can do this all metal hot in without doing anything at all to this assembly with the fans if you want. It's still a great improvement. They're not cheap, but you know what? They're worth it. They really are. Then we're going to take this little, some people call it a grub, grub screw in other countries. I myself call it a little set screw. We're going to start that in there just till it starts. Now that we've got that in there, can you guys see all this? Where I'm working? Yeah, right there. Okay, I'm trying to keep you in the shot for the most part. This is a little 7 millimeter wrench, if I'm not mistaken. Fits right on here. Just give that a good, a good little snug in there. There, it's good and tight there. We're not done though. That's not the only tightening we're going to do. Did I put it in the right side? Dun, dun, dun. Nope. Now what you want to pay close attention to, and I just did not. This could screw in from either side. So you want to make sure that this is on the side that all this goes into. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. And if you want to, you can hold on to it with a pair of pliers ever so gently and just give it a little, a little tweak. And then once that's tightened down, let's go ahead and put a hot end on, a, a nozzle. And we'll give that the same little tweak. We're going to do this once again once we heat it up. Because when you heat it up, all this is going to grow. And we're going to tighten it and tighten. And then we're going to let it cool back down so we can handle it again. But in order to do that, now we need to put the hot end in. So we're going to go ahead and put the hot end in. And we're going to go ahead and put the screw back in. Put our thermostat in the hole where it belongs. And we're going to put our screw back in. They provide, they provide you with a screw as well. Now that's a little Phillips. I'm going to change my tip here. There we go. We got that held in place. Go ahead and tighten that down. Everything is locked in. Now we're going to fire the machine up and we're going to go ahead and take the nozzle up to temp. So we're going to go control, temperature, nozzle. We're going to take her up to just 210. 210, 220, whatever it takes. We'll go 220. Then we'll go back to the main screen 
and we're gonna watch this come up to temp. Once it's up to temperature, I'm gonna grab onto this thing and I'm gonna give this thing another tightening on the hot, on the the upper end and the bottom end. It's gonna climb up there pretty quick. Now once you have it hot and you tighten it down like I just did, we're gonna let it cool down before we finish handling everything else. While I'm waiting for it to cool down, I'm gonna go ahead. I don't see why I can't go ahead and put my Bowden tube on, do you? We'll go ahead and slide that one in there. And let's see here. This goes over about that far. I think we can shorten that up a little bit now because not nearly as much as going down inside. So we'll take off another little bit here. Then we can shove this right down. See, that only goes down in there like that far. I mean, it's just a little bit. And once you got that down in there where you want it, put your little red clip on here. Give it another shove down to make sure it's in there tight. And go ahead and put your clip on this end. Once your hot end cools down, go ahead and slide it up in here and tighten the set screw. Now me, I just tighten the set screw down. I'm a little stronger than some people maybe. I just used the short end. I didn't use the long end like this. Because I feel that if you use the long end, you could, you could easily put too much leverage on it. And then from our little pet fangy here, I went ahead and installed this. It's not tightened down yet. I can still shift it up and down if I want. I'm gonna kind of just test fit it and just see how things look on here. This will have to come up like this. Now one little tech tip I will share with you. When I printed this piece out, I printed it out at 96%. And I printed this piece out at 97% to scale. And that was plenty tight. If you print it out to 100%, what I found is this fits way too tight. This would hit this one here I can actually work in and it's going to stay there without any exist any uh, extra screws. Should just push on there and you can service it. This one fits a little looser, but the reason I'm I'm doing that is I want to get a I just want to get a good feel about where I want this positioned so that this is blowing down on that tip, but not don't want it below the tip. So I kind of see where it's at on the on the on here, and I'm just gonna. I'll tighten it down just like that with the one I want on there and we'll go from there. And these are the screws that held the, orig the original piece on so you're able to reuse those. With that in place, I'm going to go ahead and put me a zip tie up here just to kind of hold this in place for a moment in time for me. I might burn a zip tie, but it's going to help take some stress off of this guy here while I'm messing around with these other wires. Um, because if you break this little joker here, then you got to wait and order you a new one. And that's all a big pain in the butt now, isn't it? Well, we're up to the portion of the show where I get to put this on, which is really awesome. Snap this up into place. Look at that. That's all nice, clean, and fresh, and brandy new. Now we're going to get busy wiring up our fans. Now what you might be asking yourself with this little 12-volt uh, fan is it's got three wires coming out of it. And you got a three wire plug. Well, how do you know which wires to use, Michael? Well, I'm going to show you. In this little kit, it's got a, a two wire, three wire to two wire conversion, right? That plugs right in. It's only one way it can plug in right there. And that'll tell you right away what's what. So here you can see that the one on the far side, the right one, is. So we're going to use black and red. We're not going to use the yellow. Easy enough. So it's just using the black and red. Black being uh, negative, red being positive. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this end off. Because we're not going to use any of that. And we're going to cut the yellow wire because I don't need it either. Now we're going to go ahead and install the fans on here and hang this in place. And I like using what they provide you here. It's actually kind of nice. You can actually put these through here like that. And then you pull them through. Once that's pulled through tight like that, that holds it. And I'm only going to use two. 
you don't need to use uh, four of them. Save two for another time. It doesn't take four to hold this in place. I'll tell you that. If you happen to break one, that way you got a spare. But look at that. Now I'm just going to pop these off. Just this little piece on the tip off. Makes a clean look. Also, make sure you're paying attention to the direction of the arrows on your fan. Showing you blowing in. That's what you want to do. And then we'll just go ahead and cut off the excess here. We'll go ahead and slide this piece back out now. And I can stick this on. Just like that. Now I'll put the fan on the other fan I've got on this one. Or remove the yellow wire on this one too. Just cut it off right about here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now all that's left to do is make wiring connections. Pretty simple, huh? So what we're going to do here, I'm going to put a little screw in here. If you buy the kit that I list below, the flathead screw kit, you will have exactly the screw you need to put in there. Now that isn't going to go anywhere. You probably don't need to put a screw in there if you don't want to. Where's it going to go? The screw sure does make it look finished when you got it in there. What I'm putting in there is a little M3 by 8 screw. Look at that. That looks all professional, don't it? That is a sweet, sweet looking setup. No doubt about it. Well, I'm going to put you on time lapse while I hook up these wires. Now, if you remember correctly, the yellow was positive on the underside, underside of this machine. And the blue was negative. And we want to make sure we hook it up that way on here. And if you want to test it, now remember the blue was the side fan that blew underneath the tip cooling, right? And we can, well, if, we're, if we question ourselves, we go back and look at the fan that we took off. And here's blue and yellow right there. That was on the side fan. The side fan cooled the tip. This is what we're going to hook our blue and yellow to. All right, now that we've got all the wires tidied up, soldered together, heat shrunk, this is a clean look. This is still a clean look. And not to mention it's blaze orange, which is a great hunting color <laughs> for deer hunting. Uh, anyway, now that we've got the new tip on, I've cranked these down. Looking from the bottom, I'm turning them clockwise, looking from the top counterclockwise to bring this down a little bit because this tip could be just a little bit taller than the other tip uh, since we have a whole new assembly there. So I'm going to go ahead and auto home this thing. Let's see what we hear. Silence. Not a single whine, not a single anything. Oh, that's beautiful. Now this machine is among, is among the quiet machines. You can't hear a single thing. That's beautiful. And that's what we wanted. I'm kind of curious if I can hear the, the motherboard fan kick on. So far, it's dead quiet. Okay, everything's nice and quiet and at home. Now I'm going to go ahead, go back to repair and hit disable steppers. So I should be able to move this thing freely. And I'm going to re-level the bed. All right, we're starting off the first print after the mod. I've re-leveled the bed. Let's see how the waistline comes out. There it is. Looks pretty good. Not too thin so far. Boy, that is so quiet now. You can't even tell it's running. You got to like that. Well, you don't have to, but I do. I like it. I love it. Look at all that movement. No sound. 
you wouldn't even know it right now hardly there's actually two of these running right side by side now before this one was like super noisy boy that is so awesomely quiet now I just turned over turned on the Ender 5 next to it you can hear all the fan noise now I'm going to show you what this one sounds like when you home it because this is what the other the Ender 3 Pro used, used to sound like hear that That's exactly how this guy sounded before we installed the board. Now it's spectacularly quiet. I found it on Thingiverse. It's called an avocado seeder or sprouter or something. You can set this over a glass of water, put an avocado seed in there and let it sit in the water and so it sprouts it. Found it on Thingiverse. My wife loves plants so I thought I'll surprise her with one of these. And maybe a two of them. Maybe a three of them. Anyway. Build something for your wife every now and then, guys. Gals, if you got the printer, build something for your guy every now and then. Well, folks, we've got all the upgrades done here. We've got it back in this location. We printed off. Printed one of those to test out the printer. And as you can see, it's running right now. And I've got two other ones running behind me over here. The loudest thing on this thing now is the actual fan for the motherboard. And I'm going to come up with a repair for that too to put a Noctua fan in there because I like my fan, I like everything quiet because when I have six, five or six of these or eventually seven of them running, they need to be this quiet because I want to do recordings and I want to do some work down here without hearing that all, everything going wee, 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 back and forth. So the silent boards are kind of fun to put in. They're easy to put in and well worth it. As you can see here, this is about ready to finish up another print. And no no servo, no no servo noise. Silent board. Can't stress enough how awesome the silent boards are. So if you have an older printer, like this one here, uh, I did a video on this one. I played, replaced the silent board on it. And I've done some other upgrades recently. Uh, this video, I've done all these upgrades, as you've seen here. And I'm pretty happy with it. I'm really happy with it. Uh, this thing turned out really, really great. Blah, 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 blah. Turned out really great. We have a Swiss all metal hot end on it now. That seems to be form. That's what after that print that in this is printing perfectly with it. Uh, it's printing this part here. I'm printing right now is another roller guide like this one. I want to put on here. And uh, boy, I just I love it. Anyway, it's time to move on to something else. Uh, we're going to just let this print some parts. I've got some things I need to design and have these printers print and we'll move on. And I uh, hope you guys found this video informative, helpful, and enjoyable to watch. Let me know if there's anything you'd like, me see, like to see me do in the future. Uh, I've got more, i got about five or six more things in the, in the irons in the fire right now as far as 3D printing goes and what I can show you guys. Coming up soon is an Ender 5 uh, unboxing, an Ender 5 also upgrades there'll be two separate videos i do have a swiss micro swiss all metal hot end direct drive conversion kit that i could put on any one of these machines i don't need to put it on there those are already direct drive but these three or my one back in the corner there my ender 3 v2 or my ender my ender pro or the ender 5 all those i could put the direct drive uh, micro swiss direct drive kit on i haven't decided which one i want to do it on yet I'm leaning toward this Ender 5. I really am. Uh, but we'll just see how that goes. And I'll show you why in the future videos, why I'd like to do it on the Ender 5. The Bowden tube with the Ender 5 is like pfft, crazy long. These, these Bowden tubes aren't very long at all. And they're really not a problem once you put the all metal hot end on. Uh, it just goes right in the top. Everything just seems to work beautifully. Uh, it's a well-designed, well-engineered product. And looking like I got a fidget spinner now. Da, 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 da. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Check in on my next video. Check out what's going on. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All the links, I put as many links in the description as I can uh, that I can remember to get in there. If you guys see something in the video that you'd like me to put a link for, link in there for, let me know. Leave a comment. I'll get the link in there as soon as I can. 
and I'll let you know my comment return comment will be the link is now in the comment section uh, because I want you guys to be able to find the stuff I'm using because uh, I know how important it is when you're ordering stuff that if you get the wrong thing you can't do what you want to do I'm trying to put in there everything you need to match up exactly what I did and how I did it uh, so it takes a lot of that guesswork out for you guys uh, especially if you're a novice wiring person or an electronics person I want to make sure you get the right stuff I'm a novice as well. Like I said, I haven't been doing this very long, uh, but I'm a quick learn, and I just I just dive in uh, four feet and two hands and four feet two two feet two hands head first into all this stuff. Anyway, this is Michael saying get out there, do something fun, be a little adventurous. Hey, look at there, on cue, on cue, just finished up. Sweet. Anyway, this is Michael, and I'm out.